West Hartford Community Television. West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hello everyone, I'm Shonda D, and I'm here today with Reality Scoop. We have a very, very important and anticipated guest. I'd like to welcome Kim Tallcouch, and she is a Reiki master teacher, and also Connie Galley, who is in partnership with the Cat Connection, Connecticut Cat Connection. So very excited to have these ladies here. And today we're gonna to talk to Kim Tallcouch about the gift that she has for being a pet psychic, uh, pet communicator. What do you prefer? Um, animal communicator, pet psychic works. Okay. And so I just wanna start off. Are you Native American? No, I'm not Native American. Okay. Um, my name um, is one, I've been asked that throughout my whole life, um, but it's not. It's just the result of Ellis Island making it more convenient for them. Oh. <laughs> so and spelling it in a way, the variation is spelled a little differently mm -hmm. um, than what it is now. So I'm not Native American, but I do use a lot of Native American um, techniques and practices in the work that I do, mm -hmm. and I draw on a lot of their beliefs, particularly when it comes to animals as messengers and guides. Oh, nice. So um, how long have you been practicing this gift? Um, since about uh, 2013, it's kind of been a, a progression, um, starting with um, becoming a Reiki um, practitioner and realizing when I was doing Reiki that I was um, receiving messages. Mm. Um, so it's a form of intuitive Reiki and I would see past lives, spirit guides, but also a lot of animal guides coming forward um, for the person who was on the table. Mm. So okay. that led me to go a little bit further and look at the uh, animal aspect a little bit closer. Um, I am also a, a shamanic practitioner and in the shamanic um, tradition, Animals are used very frequently for spiritual Cere work, yeah. ceremony, um, power animals, guides, again, messengers. Um, so the more I became involved in that activity, um, the more I realized that I had um, an ability to work more directly with animals. Okay. Um, psychics have been telling me that for years and I kind of fluffed it off. Um, you know, you, you can communicate with animals, you should develop it. But then once I started working and having these Reiki attunements and some other shamanic rites, I believe it's brought up my vibrational level. So it's opened me up intuitively. Mm -hmm. And then in around 2014, I started to put myself out there and mm -hmm. not just work with family and friends, pets um, and their issues, but to develop a website and attend fairs, expos, work out of metaphysical shops. And wow. That's where I am. Nice. So um, earlier I had asked uh, Kim if people are in tune with animals, like a spirit guide. So she was very, very nice to uh, tell me, I guess my spirit guide today is a turkey. So I have a, a wonderful turkey feather, so I want to thank you for that. And uh, this goes with uh, blessings of abundance and harvest, which is what I'm all about. That's why we're doing this today for you. So thank you again for that. Okay. And um, when you talk to the animals, do they like scream at you? Do they come up to you? And do you hear voices? I can. Um, they come to me in um, delivering their message in a lot of different ways. Um, basically, intuitive communication with animals is transferring um, the energy of our thoughts and our feelings mm. and sharing those. Animals are constantly picking up our thoughts and mm. interpreting them in um, ways that they can deal with and, and incorporate into their own lives. And likewise, they're always sending us messages, but we've got so much going on. There's so much chatter mm. and we're really not in tune to that level of nonverbal communication. So we kind of just kind of filter it out unless we need to. You might look at your pet and say, I don't like the way they look. There's something not right, but mm -hmm. they haven't done anything any different. It's just a sense that you know. Well, they kind of do that with us. So mm -hmm. okay. it's very individual um, depending on how that animal wants to communicate with me. I can actually hear a voice. Mostly I'm getting an image. 
um, an image or I'll feel a sensation or an emotion that they have. Okay. Um, so it, um, but I will actually hear a little voice, you know, like almost yelling at me. Usually when it's um, an emotional aspect that they want to really get a point across, they want to either fear or mm -hmm. um, really hit home, it'll be like a, like a yell. Okay. Catch my <clears throat> attention. So when the animals speak to you, do you speak back to them? Uh, again, not in a verbal way. If, you know, when I'm doing this, I'm just kind of sending an image or a thought okay. or, or a phrase to them. I will ask specific questions if, it, if there's a specific question that um, needs to be answered. Mm -hmm. So um, depending on um, the individual, okay. the individual animal as well. And what's the, I would say, what's the most interesting animal you've ever communicated with? Um, I've done communications with parrots, which are very interesting. Mm. Um, I've done uh, a, a rehabber's possum. Oh, wow. And um, I volunteer at the Connecticut Bearsley Zoo, so very wow. informally, I don't do this you know, mm -hmm. I don't do this for them. I just do this for my own work. Okay. Um, so sometimes some of the reptiles that I'll work with there are mm -hmm. very interesting. Okay. Um, what do they like to say? Um, Help me. They, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, well, they'll just kind of, um, what I do more with them is I like to honor them mm. and let them know that they are ambassadors of their species, which oh. is why they're where they are. Wow. And I will maybe recite some of the characteristics that are in these books of the medicine and the message that they give as a species mm -hmm. and just kind of, you know, validate that they may not be where they want to be, but their, their life is very important in an educational way and in an informative way, particularly animals that are endangered. All right, very wonderful. And that's really interesting. Never thought of an, an animal being an ambassador of their species, but that's very well put like mm. that. So today uh, we have some special guests who are here in spirit that we're gonna be sharing with you today. And hopefully you can tell us, uh, you know, what they're thinking and feeling. Sure. So I'm gonna let uh, Connie here Flip my pages out? Yeah. Okay, it does. Give you the first one. So these um, lovely creatures are from the Connecticut Cat Connection. Um, some may have been already adopted or are up for adoption. So at the end of the show, if you do want to call in about any of these animals, let us know. Thank you. And they're all fixed and spayed or neutered and shots and chips. Mm, wonderful. And chips. Awesome. And chips. Um, and all of these pets are alive? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you just very basic um, general age, and um, is this a, a I'm getting a male with this, but it's that, a male. okay. And do you have the age of this guy? Uh, He's uh, five, I five, believe. Yeah, That's okay. Uh, Humphrey. Yeah. Okay, I was gonna Humphrey ask Humphrey Perkins. Humphrey <laughs> Perkins, yes. Okay. Humphrey has some issues. Um, of course, every cat I'm sure mm -hmm. you have there has some issues. Um, but what I'm getting um, with him is that there are, um, just what's jumping out right now, is that there are some, um, some pretty deep trust issues. And he's, um, he's had a little bit of a hard time. And he has some adjustment issues as a result of it. Um, and he's older than his years. In he's some absurd. ways, he's older than, than his years. In some ways, seems to be. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's, um, you know, he's he's had some struggles, and he's got some um, coping coping issues, and how to break some of the patterns that um, he thought has worked for him in the past, mm -hmm. but maybe not so well. Mm -hmm. um, and for his age, um, I'm getting that at, like that there was a sense that. He was, he had a home, but then there was some, that he was like kind of on the street for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that he wasn't um, really very well cared for. He was kind of on his own. Um, he is a little bit of a loner. I'm not so sure how well he would do in a family with other, mm -hmm. um, other cats, pets. Mm -hmm. um, maybe after he had felt um, comfortable and, and adjusted and that this was a forever home. He's, he's got this kind of feeling about him where he's always going to be waiting for the other foot to drop. And he's not really sure 
um, again, as I started saying, some trust issues mm -hmm. and just um, a lot of insecurities. But underneath that is kind of a sweet cat mm -hmm. and somebody who um, could really contribute to the right the right owner. I think it's very important that there be the right pairing with this guy. Um, otherwise, he's going to be in a rehoming kind of a loop. Right. Would you like me to confirm? Uh, yes. Okay. Humphrey is one of the top five nicest cats we've ever had come into the shelter. You're absolutely right. He has trust issues because he was with the family and they booted him out on the street. We don't know why. He had a tough life on the street. He got FIV. He's FIV oh. positive. But a sweeter cat, and, and he came in, he's, he is a loner, but he loves people. He has been adopted just last week. Mm. Humphrey, when I put my hand in a cage, because he's a big cat and he was out on the street, we don't know for how long. But when animals run to you uh, on the street, you know that they belonged in somebody's homes. Mm. They're not feral. Uh, Humphrey, when I put my hand in the cage to pet his cheek very cautiously, because again, he does mm. have some trust issues, he did this and held my hand against his cheek. Mm. It's hard work in there. <laughs> so, no. When I took my hand back out and went to pet him again, he held my hand for a few minutes, put my hand against oh. his cheek. He does. He was going into a single cat home. He had uh, some ringworm issues from being out on the street. We couldn't mm. find because he's a puffy little bugger. Mm. And when we shaved him down, we found it. So he was treated. He did finally go to his forever home. But I think, as you said, when he that other shoe is not going to drop, and I think he's going to be fine with that. Yeah. There's an older couple that took him. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So that you were very thank on you. With that. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. He did have a tough time. He was booted out. We don't know why. Mm -hmm. Next. Next. Okay. Okay. Some good news for Humphrey. One I really okay. Next. These are sisters. <clears throat> oh, the torties. Honey and uh, sunshine. Honey. And uh, yeah, you, they're you one years it. old. Uh, so they young girls. They came in together. Yes. Are you keeping them together? They came in yeah. together. They are sisters. Okay. Yeah. The, will they be placed together? We want them to be placed yeah, together. Yeah, I think that young. would be yeah. very yeah. important yeah. for They're them. They're very bonded. Yeah. Um, and they also um, have some history that's not um, so pleasant. Can you tell us about that? Because we, j I just know that they were yeah. not surrendered, but seized. Yeah. So that yes. means to me. Yeah, that there was. Um, yeah. So the, there was. Um, I'm getting a sense that like almost like a hoarding situation mm -hmm. that there was um, ill intentions, you know, mm -hmm. um, somebody thought they were maybe doing the right thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but didn't, you know, certainly was not meeting the basic needs. Mm -hmm. But um, so there are some probably some social issues with that as well. Um, but I think that they have um, come into this situation together and it's important that they stay together um, because they're going to act as each other's own support system mm -hmm. where, where they go. Mm -hmm. um, so if they were to be separated, I think that there would be problems in those homes mm -hmm. with um, emotional trauma. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, our pets store trauma the same way that people do. Mm -hmm. they, they store them in their energy centers and if they don't have um, healthy ways of working through it or absorbing it in the wrong way, then it stays with them and it can manifest in either health issues or behavioral issues mm -hmm. later on. And um, I think with these two that it would be very important that they end up um, staying together because it would, um, like what they're showing me is that they are one pet. Mm -hmm. That they are mm -hmm. showing me that they, like almost like a Siamese thing mm -hmm. that they, you know, energetically um, they were each other's support system. They got themselves through the situation that they were in, and um, they won't, you know, really won't be meet their ideal and be at their best if they are separated. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, somebody can recognize that um, they were in bad shape too. Mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing like malnourished, mm -hmm. and um, there could also be some issues around those types of um, behaviors later on with like them. emotional eating. Yes, and like exactly. I have, I have a hoarding cat, a cat in a yep. hoarding situation. He, he hoovers his food, then goes, everybody else. Yeah, food. I can even almost see like binging and purging, you yeah, know, like, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, gor yeah. gorging, gorging. And um, that could take some time to resolve as well. But um, I think though, um, they, I'm not feeling now that, that that's an issue. I don't right. know how long they've been with you guys, but they've, um, 
they're very content. They have a lot to offer. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that wh where they go, it's going to have to, they're going to pick who takes them. Okay. As opposed to somebody so picking them, you. they're going to pick, mm -hmm. um, they're, they're almost here for um, a particular reason and mm -hmm. they're going to be bringing something to somebody. It's going to be okay. a very special relationship. Somebody's going to need what they can bring to them mm -hmm. um, and it's not just going to be, oh, I, need, I want a cat. Mm -hmm. They're going to fill a need for somebody and it's going to click. Well, I'm going to, now I got it. Yesterday I was told, uh, just yesterday, that they have been adopted. They were adopted together, but they're still at the shelter. So when I go back, I will call the shelter and say, let me know about these people yeah. and they will fill a need and, and perhaps they, yes. they picked you. You yes. did not pick yeah. them. So that will help. But they just, uh, uh, I was just told yesterday because somebody knew I was coming here and went, adopted, going to be adopted. It's like, well, good. Do you have pictures of them on a website or something? Uh, so they put things up on a pet finder, um, but not everybody goes in because honestly, they do a great job and they do, even with kitten season, tend to move cats pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. um, they're open at night for people to come see, but these two, this is how they are. Every time you go in, yeah. Once more in the background, one's in the foreground, but this is how they are every time you go in. Because I'm just not that far. I'm away. thinking maybe the person who who's going to take them in saw them before and like could, could and be. was just thinking about them yeah, and yeah, thinking could about be. them. I have to and ask. I know yeah. we don't update the yes. pet finder yeah. as often as we could. And that so they were like, I, I got it. They was those cats are talking yeah, to me. I got it. Yeah. You know, I, they yeah. kind of went yeah. back and yeah. forth. They're well, sweet little kitties, but I will. Uh, you, they you are. want one more or you would? Nope. In the interest of time, we okay. do have to move along. Okay. So um, this is uh, my baby. Her name is Chloe. So if you could tell sure. us about her. Let me just get the glare going here. How old is Chloe? She's 13. I was going to say because she's not a young girl. No. Um, okay. So she's, um, she's got um, attitude. Mm -hmm. Like, um, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but she is her own, mm -hmm. her own being, um, which is a very endearing quality about her. She's kind of no nonsense. She um, is very, very hooked in with you. Um, and she's saying you may not think that, that this is not necessarily something that you may, um, that you, you know, you feel that sometimes you're not sure mm -hmm. if that's the case, <laughs> but it is, it's just her way. Um, she's a very, um, old soul kind of a cat where she's got, um, wisdom, which is why she's got a little bit of that attitude mm -hmm. because she's been around the block. Now, how long have you had her? Three years. I was going to say not the third, certainly not the 13 years because she's got some, mm -hmm. some history yes. too. So she was a rescue as yes. well. I got her from the Connecticut Cat Connection. Okay. And she had, um... I, I'm seeing like some adjustment issues. People mm. didn't get her. Yeah. You get her. Yeah. Um, and you accept her for the way that she is and the, um, the attitude that she has. Mm -hmm. um, now she's, um, you, she's, do you have, you have another cat? Is there somebody she shares space with? No, but okay. she did. Okay. It was her brother he passed on. Uh, a, a litter mate brother? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm, I'm feeling that she still feels he's with her. Is that mm. recent? Yeah, he's... Uh, last year. Yeah, he's still, he's still around and they have a relationship mm -hmm. with him in spirit. And it's actually something that's very useful for her. And she, mm -hmm. she needs that um, because he kind of keeps her a little bit grounded. Yeah. And keeps her... Um, present she he's going to be there for her mm -hmm. um and she's slowing down a little bit yes yeah um, arthritis maybe yeah she just i'm she's certainly feeling her age but it's not just age overall i'm just feeling like there's even like some system slowdown mm -hmm. um maybe diabetes uh, or, or kidneys or yeah. something along those lines but there is some feeling that there's something above and beyond just general age, but that there are some um, like systemic stuff maybe okay. going on. Um, I usually look for the teeth. Her, her, she's not complaining about her teeth. Um, is no, that something but that sometimes work with? Um, when I touch her uh, certain places, she'll cry. Okay. And the mouth are just over it, but because like I said, there is, I am getting a sense that there's just, um, 
like I'm saying like systemic, so it's something part of a system. Okay. Um, so, but she's, um, she's, you know, it's, she's like, it is what it is. Mm. Um, you know, this is, this is what I, you know, this is what I get. She did not think that she would be around this long. Mm. So she's taking every day as a gift. Oh, that's yeah. beautiful. She didn't, um, you know, her situation was very difficult. And um, I want to say she's almost uh, like, you know, had kind of given up and wasn't sure that things were going to pan out for her. Now, her brother had a very different personality than her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in some ways, they balanced each other out. Yes. So she's a little out of balance in that mm. way. But, um, but he's there with her, and he realizes that. And um, animals are able to, um, in their zone out time, you know, when you see like a cat and they're just kind of zoning, mm -hmm. and they're not asleep. Um, they're very spiritual animals, so they always kind of are connected with the other side. Okay. And the other side is very, um, you know, in bonds, love bonds that they have, the other side is very connected with them as well. And um, she's, he's kind of put off his transition and, and his movement to, to be around her because mm. he realizes that um, she still needs that. Mm. So they're very much part of each other's soul group, and he's helping um, her through some of this... Uh, stuff that she's got she's kind of carrying on and what's I'm also feeling is happening with her is that her past is catching up with her as she's aging yeah. some cats that happens with some it doesn't you know they're able to put it behind them and they move forward but she's kind of pulling in some of this this trauma and some of the stress that she's carried on through her life yeah. and it's starting to manifest in her a little bit now okay. so also contributing to her slowing down a little yeah. bit but one of the things I always ask them and I think is really important is their level of contentment because that's really, they, you know, are they safe? Are they mm -hmm. happy? And she is. So mm. she's very content. There's really not much you can do for her for where she's at. It's her own stuff. Okay. But you are meeting all of her needs, and she's very, very happy and very content. She feels safe. And for a cat that's had this history, that's mm -hmm. huge. Yes, thank you. And, and making them feel safe and content. So, um, yep, yeah, she's, she's, she's slowing down a little bit, though. Okay. This is uh, Charlie. And he is two and a half years old, and he lives in Enfield, Connecticut. So what I'm getting with him right away is he's like really a ball of energy. Um, is he a rescue also? Yes, he is. Yeah, um, because there's um, sometimes with rescues, I, I feel like a little bit of confusion. Um, so what I'm feeling with Charlie is that he's he's owned and he's taken responsibility for some of the things that have happened to him and he shouldn't. Mm -hmm. So he's internalized some of, um, you know, the things that have happened and, and that's not, um, that's, not, that's, that's not the way it should be. But he is, um, I don't want to say special needs, mm -hmm. but he does have some, <laughs> some special needs. Mm -hmm. um, so he needs to, um, like a lot of patience, and I think that he can get very anxious okay. and have some kind of generalized anxiety because of some of the issues that I mentioned before that he's owned stuff that he shouldn't be owning. Um, and and with, with dogs, well, cats as well, you know, they can handle some of the adversity that they had in a number of ways. They can either, you know, lash back out at, you know, people or they can internalize it or they okay. can just accept it, you know, but so he's internalized it and... Um, he, he, so it's going to take a little bit of, of um, time with him to just kind of work some of that out. But there may be some um, issues, behavioral issues or emotional issues with him. But this is a very nice dog. Mm. He's a very sweet dog. But um, I just get like some confusion. Okay. Um, just like, like just kind of doesn't know where he fits and he's just kind of sorting out. Um, has he, I'm feeling like he's, new to where he is yes so that this is all still something yeah. that is new you know so he's he could just mm -hmm. be going through that adjustment mm -hmm. period but um he's going to need a little extra work like he's i don't want to say he's high maintenance mm -hmm. but he's not low maintenance yeah. necessarily okay. either <laughs> so so you would recommend like an obedience class possibly um you know i I'm, I'm mixed with obedience class well yes any training with the owner mm -hmm. um sometimes you know, people will tell me, well, I'm going to, you know, have him train. I'm going to send him to a trainer. Well, they, they're bonded to the owners, okay. not a trainer. Mm -hmm. So any work that is done with him, 
should be done with the owner and the care, I hate to say owner, the caretaker, mm -hmm. um, the pet parent, um, because that's who he's going to ultimately be answering to okay. and um, who he really wants to please. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, possibly, but if it's still new, you know, they might just want to try, you know, their own, their own techniques as opposed to formalized obedience training. Mm -hmm. But I think that he needs to um, burn off energy um, and, and be stimulated a lot so that he can burn off that nervous kind of energy. Okay. Um, that he might have. Um, so even if it's in a toy, it doesn't have to be, you know, a physical energy. It could be in a toy that keeps him busy That's for right. a long time and mm -hmm. kind of takes his mind off of, of his his situation because I kind of see him going back in almost in a loop. Okay. So he gets kind of in loops and mm -hmm. um, he, those need to be broken so that he can move forward a little bit. Okay. Well, I do want to thank you. That's all the time that we have for today. Unfortunately, I wish I could go on and on. But I uh, just want to say thank you to both of you for being here. Thank you. Uh, Kim Tallcouch and Connie Galley from the Connecticut Cat Connection. Uh, also, uh, she recommends some books today for us to uh, think about and read about. The first one is The Animal Spirit Guides by Stephen D. Farmer. And the second book is... Learn the Language of the Animals. All right, wonderful. Animal speak. So uh, where can people find you, Kim? Um, I have a... Uh, uh, website it's www.featherstouchreiki.com and i have a facebook page which is feathers touch healing and pet communication and uh, can reach me from either one of those locations and um, are you going to be at any special events because uh here in windsor locks um she has worked in the past at psychic fairs uh with mandazi books mm -hmm. So what are some of the other things that you're doing this summer, if anything? Um, well, I was just the Soul Light Expo in East Hartford. I worked that um, okay. with the door opener. Mm -hmm. um, I worked that this past, I think it was in May. Mm -hmm. um, and I will be at the next Soul Light Expo, which is in Cromwell. Oh, nice. Uh, that's October 15th. And uh, for the summer, there are, um, I was just at a, uh, Metaphysical store in Guilford, Enchanted, a couple of weeks back. Um, for the summer, it looks like I don't know if there's any more expos. Things come up in between, okay. shops pop up, but right. um, usually in the fall, the uh, nice. fears kick in. So, Well, we want to just thank you for being here on Reality Scoop. I'm your host, Shonda D, and we'll see you next time.